So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. 10 reasons why I'm switching to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, if you've been following the saga, I switched to the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And essentially, you can tell I've been using the heck out of it. Look at all this wear and gunk on this case. But I've actually switched back to iPhone into the 14 Pro Max. And there's several reasons why. And while I do think Samsung's definitely innovating hardcore, over Apple, definitely making something that's arguably better and different than the iPhone. There's just a few reasons why I'm drawn to the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and let me explain them here. The first one is the space black, specifically the colorway. I know it sounds silly, you're picking a phone just for the color, yeah, because Apple hasn't done a black type of iPhone since the jet black iPhone 7 Plus, and that was one of my favorite iPhones Apple ever created. Um, yes, the back is gray, and I still want to see them do a more black phone. I think the Phantom Black from Samsung, like the S21 Ultra, S22 Ultra, is still a better colorway. But finally having it here for the iPhone, especially on the edges, is pretty sweet. I typically like black watches or watches with black cases on them, black bands. I'm really into those colors. They're stealthy. I really like them these days. I'm not saying it'll always be that way, but I definitely really love the black colorways for this iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. So that's my first reason. My second reason is the dynamic island. So I'm gonna tell you, it's not like the only reason to buy this phone, but you know, Android's doing different things. The Android manufacturers with foldable phones, flipping phones, going back in the day with the flip stuff. But at the same time, we haven't anything really different from Apple in a while. And now we do, we have the dynamic island. So if you're playing music or anything like that, You'll be able to interact with this thing up here. You get phone calls. You'll be able to go ahead and interact with something. So I just like interacting with something new. And because I've tried folding phones before, this is a little bit more new feeling, at least right now. This will probably trick over in all Apple products as usually how it goes. And eventually it won't be as new anymore. And we'll be looking for something else new. But for now, I'm really enjoying the newer Dynamic Island feature set. Like I say, I still think it's distracting for video. It's not as good as a notch when it comes to distraction wise, but I still like using the new software. The next one is the battery life. I have not found a phone on the Android side that beats the Max iPhones. Yes, they are close and in some areas, you know, the iPhone 14 Pro Max can get annoying. Like I had to find my battery drain the other day. At the same time, their phones, these iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Plus even better, these phones just last and last and last. And it's hard to beat these phones. I have not tried an Android phone in the flagship area that has beat the iPhone Max devices lately. So definitely I miss the battery every time I come here. The next one is the video camera on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Specifically, I like the Pro Video applications that are for iOS. They have a lot of these for Android as well, but the cameras are just great on here. I, I like to use Filmic Pro, this manual camera app. I have this Motif mic that allows me to get Pro audio right from the iPhone itself, and I just love the results that come from this. You can set your exposure value, and some people ask, you got that video from the iPhone? Well, I'm doing it through applications like this that allow you to lock the exposure, lock the focus, lock the white balance, and then you're like, whoa, that was an iPhone? You thought it was coming from this app? Nope, not quite. But even if you do use the regular iPhone video app, you do get yourself the action mode, and this is super smooth. But not only that, I just tend to really like the results that come from the video on the iPhone. And being a video creator, this is very important. So every time I'm using another phone, I just don't wanna take much video. I'm missing my iPhone for things like making YouTube videos and social media content. So definitely like it a lot for that area. It's still pretty much the king in this area. The fifth reason is gonna be communications. Now I'm not gonna open up my phone calls and messages for the video. But you know the drill, iMessage, you know, having the ability to text everybody. And I gotta tell you, I used to be, I had a few people that were using Android, but pretty much everybody that I know now is switched over to Apple, like everyone, like in my personal life. I know here on the YouTubes, a lot of people are using Android, rock on, I like Android as well. Obviously I've covered it multiple times and still cover it and will continue to do so. But in terms of my personal life, it's been hard to like shy away from using Apple products just simply because I message. I don't even get people's messages. And as a matter of fact, I have this little thing where I'm just like, yeah, when I wanna uh, use my own real life focus mode, I just switch over to an Android phone so I can just like ignore everybody while I do my work. And then I go back 
and check my iMessages because, you know, they don't even come through. That's really annoying. People, you know, that have Android phones can't get their messages from iPhone users. But this is one of the reasons why Google wants Apple to adopt RCS. Next one is a little bit uh, petty, but at the same time, it's a flat screen. I know, you know, you could use other phones and they have flat screens as well. But at the high end level, most of the premier Android phones are using these curved screens. I don't like this. I want Android phones to have flat screens as well. That's why I really like the Galaxy S22 Plus, but that phone has a 1080p screen. You get the 2K or the higher resolutions on the 14 Pro Max, and it's practical. Every day, I don't need no curves on my display. I need a flat panel just like my laptop and my tablet for everyday usage, and I miss it every time I'm using a curved panel. One of the reasons why I really like the Galaxy Fold, Z Fold, and I switched to that is because the inside is flat and so is the outside. The S22 Ultra, Pixel 7 Pro, and more phones are still using curved panels, so I wanna see that change. Number seven is the performance. Now, I'm not talking about just benchmarks and when I speed test things for you guys. What I'm saying is that in the real world, I'm finding the iPhone 14 Pro Max to just smoke most Android phones. It just feels so much faster. And there is one phone that's definitely on the same level though, and that is the Pixel 7 Pro. I love this device right here. We just did a review on it, and I could tell you, Pixel 7 Pro, man, if you want an Android phone that feels like this phone in terms of speed, go with that one. But honestly, when it comes to benchmarks and consistency, there still has not been a phone to beat this device. I even have to say the 14 Pro Max is a little faster than the Pixel 6 Pro and 7 Pro when it comes to just overall consistency. But I think Google's onto something with the Tensor CPUs, and I think they're going to get to this level very quickly. So... Enjoy it while you can, Apple, because they're sneaking up on you. But I got to say, for now, Apple's still the king of performance. Every day, all day, butter smooth, consistent, blazing fast, all year long, every day, every hour, every minute, every second. It's just fast. So that's just something I really love about using 14 Pro Max. Number eight is the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, I did an honest review of this the other day. I love this watch. It's got a large, you know, face. It's got its flat screen, unlike the other curved Apple watches, what I just talked about earlier. Flat screen. Apple, bring a smaller size for people who don't want this big donkey size watch on their wrist, please. But overall, this this watch for me fits perfect on my wrist. And I gotta say, I just love the flat screen. It makes it more usable as a smart watch because you don't need no random curves messing up your typing and stuff like that. I just got to say, it's easy to click icons on this watch. Love the battery life. Love the Apple Watch Ultra. One of my favorite products launched this year by Apple. Finally changing something in the Apple Watch lineup, giving the same thing year after year after year after year. The Apple Watch Ultra feels different, and I love that. So, yeah, that's number eight. <laughs> you know why? Because I got to use an iPhone to connect with my Apple Watch Ultra. So that's one of the reasons I'm switching back. Number nine is the ecosystem of products. So when I want to use my AirPods uh, Pro 2, I could just pop these open. They will connect right there to the iPhone. I go in my living room. I got my Apple TV. I can just use the remote right here to turn on the Apple TV. If I want to airdrop something, I just airdrop it to my Mac. I throw on my AirPods Max. I want to edit a video. I just edit a video. I mean, it's it's ridiculous how these phone these products work together. It's like it's literally almost like magic. They just work. You don't have to really do anything, and it's really good because it allows you to focus. It allows you to stop thinking about the technology and thinking about the task at hand. Now, I've had some troubles with some other ecosystems where I feel like there's more setup processes, a little bit slower. I got to greet all these terms, all these weird things. It just takes longer to get the ecosystem set up. And I suppose that there are other platforms that are getting better at this. And I do like where Google's going with the Pixel Watch. I'm going to cover that soon, as well as Google TV. And even having Google Pixel Buds is a great competitor as well. We also do have the Google Pixel Tablet. So I will consider switching to that ecosystem, try that out, see how that works in the future, but they're still bringing out the tablet. The iPhone still has every single product, the laptop, the tablet, the headphones, the Apple TV. What are they missing? Basically a car. That's about it. But overall, I really do like the overall ecosystem here. And then Apple CarPlay, for example, as well, inside the car system, that also matches up beautifully as well. So 
it's hard to just like not use these products if you're into tech and want to just kind of make things smooth for yourself. And number 10, the looks of the phone. I honestly think this is one of the best looking phones on the market, if not the best looking phone on the market. Now, I will pass. I, if this was gone, it would be the absolute best looking phone out there. I, I talked about how I want to use this feature, but I still think an all screen iPhone is just perfection. But we're going to have to see if that's going to ever be the case. I don't know if it ever will be. Um, but definitely just the way this looks is practical. It's premium. It's professional. It looks, it's just gorgeous. It's a gorgeous piece of tech and it feels extremely premium. It feels like the price you paid. And that's something you have to do if you're going to be asking $1,100 for a phone. So that's about it. The iPhone 14 Pro Max. You can tell I'm definitely loving this phone right here. I do think you can skip it if you have the 13 Pro Max. If you have a 12 Pro Max, you could even consider skipping it if you want to wait just 11 more months to get the better 15 Pro Max. But man, this phone is, is good. It's definitely the king probably again. I have to try out the S23 Ultra soon to see if that takes the crown. But for now, I'm switching over here and I'll let you know if I switch to something else down the line. Now, don't think I just switched randomly. I did give the Galaxy Z Fold 4 a few, a couple months here, actually, almost three months here of using it. And while I still think, again, I'm not crapping on this phone, this phone blows away the iPhone 14 Pro Max in a lot of areas, being a foldable, being a different experience, you know, having a smaller screen for convenience on the front day to day, the bigger screen for multitasking at night. But you just couldn't pull me fully away from the camera, the video for my video creations and some other areas that we talked about in this video. But I'm still gonna give them a chance with the S23 Ultra. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for many more videos coming for the rest of this year. We still had to compare this to the Pixel 7 Pro S22 Ultra and many more. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you all on the next episode and peace.